Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today, we're having a fun hero conversation with Kareem Josephs, who is the lead power systems engineer at Eaton. Welcome, Kareem. Hey, Chris. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Looking forward to, to going through this conversation with you. I know you'll have a, a, a lot of insight and you're going to inspire people. So maybe get us started by talking about your journey to where you're at now. Okay. So uh, as Chris mentioned, I'm lead power systems engineer for Eaton Corporation. I started my engineering career back in 2007, uh, and I worked with Mesa Associates, a small engineering architecture and engineering consultant firm, uh, for almost nine years. Uh, I'd say the bulk of my knowledge and engineering experience comes through Mesa Associates. After working for Mesa Associates, I took a position with Black & Veatch as a project electrical engineer, and I stayed with Black & Veatch for about two and a half years. Black & Veatch is at least it was at the time, the ninth largest engineering firm in the world. And I was part of a hydropower system group that basically supported the Tennessee Valley of Authority, uh, one of the largest utility organizations in North America. Stayed there, like I said, about two and a half years and got an opportunity to go to work for Eaton, which is a uh, power systems or power management organization, power management company and utilize a lot of the, the design and protection power systems analysis skills that I've learned over the years with Eaton now. I've been here almost three years, and I'm enjoying it. Okay, so you were able to transfer a lot of the, the things you picked up. It Was it Misa and Black and VH that and you bring that, that's able to help you at Eaton? That's correct. Yes, it has. Nice. Now, you're based out of where? I'm based out of Ringgold, Georgia. Probably nobody knows where that is, <laughs> but uh, it's it's about I live about three miles south of just inside the Georgia border, but right there at Chattanooga, Tennessee, nice. essentially. Okay, very good. So Chattanooga, beautiful part of the world. So at least you have yes, it is some 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 good roads to ride around. Sounds like that there. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> very good, man. So you you you've been a, in an industry a while. You've seen it from a lot of different standpoints. What do you see as some of the greatest challenges the industry has coming up on us? From a utility standpoint, I would say an aging utility grid. You know, our utility grid now is is getting up in age. The domain, uh, the demand is uh, gotten such that you know we need more power. There's more buildings, infrastructure is going up all the time. There's constantly a demand for for new power, for renewable energy. You know, generation such as solar. And, you know, a, a lot of that has its own set of challenges, you know, transient stability, a lot of different things that uh, we're looking at now. <clears throat> a part of my master's program that I'm doing right now, my thesis work is on transient stability for you know, like uh, you know, voltaic systems, which is basically solar power. And so that that's going to be a challenge over the next couple of years that needs to be addressed. And, uh, you, know, you know, again, the replacement of the towers, the aging power lines, systems, and so forth, I see as some of the great challenges that we face as power engineers over the next five to 10 years. No doubt. And just, I'm thankful that you have top of minds like you, Kareem, out there that are, that are taking this head on and no doubt you'll make an impact, you know, in that space, man. You know, when you, everybody has goals and things they're trying to accomplish. So what, what's something you're chasing right now? Uh, I am I am doing a master's in electrical engineering right now. Just finished up another two classes, you know, continuing to learn about the ever-changing power system. You know, power in of itself kind of remains the same, but the applications that sit on top of the power are dynamic. They change, you know, we get more bells and whistles on top of, you know, the the overall power foundation. And it's it's really cool to stay abreast and to be engaged with all the technologies that help make the calculation of power systems more pleasant and less time consuming. So, you know, a lot of that is really, really cool. So I see myself as far as challenges are concerned, 
you know, continuing with my master's, possibly doing uh, a doctorate in electrical engineering. And we have to see how that balances with the rest of my life. But yeah, that's something that I definitely would uh, welcome. And that's something that's on my radar as of 2020 to complete. That is awesome, man. You are my hero for sure. <laughs> so how are you doing that through like online classes or are you actually going to? Uh, a- so <laughs> prior to the COVID-19 pa- uh, pandemic, I had face-to-face lectures with my professor. But ever since the, uh, you know, the stay-at-home orders, everything has been online. And traditionally, I tend to prefer the face-to-face lecture over the online classes, even though for the master's program that I'm doing at the University of Tennessee, everything was offered online prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think, you know, a lot of this, you know, the resources were there, they're already in place, which made the transition fairly easy from face-to-face to online. So I would say for at least, you know, I'm, I, I just finished this spring semester. I would say possibly in the fall, everything may still be online. And then hopefully we'll return to face-to-face and online in the spring semester of 2021. But we'll see. No one knows quite how this is going to really turn out. Yeah, no doubt about that, man. I'm, 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 be, I'm glad for when school gets back to normal just in general. So oh, at, tell uh, me about it. <laughs> I, I didn't realize I was going to be a, need to add elementary school teacher to my resume, but apparently I do. <laughs> it's the same here with us, too. And I will say, you know, in defense of our our kids' school, that they've really stepped up and they made it pretty much the same as, I guess, when the kids were in school. They've They've kind of implemented Zoom and, you know, they keep the kids very well occupied. Well, at least my daughter. They keep the kids... Well, my daughter very well occupied. Uh, my son takes a little more time to go through his his curriculum for the day, but uh, you know, my wife <clears throat> fortunately is able to take on the brunt of that while I continue to work from home. Right. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I mean, for for the school that we're with, they're using basically YouTube, so they record the lessons, and you know, you just kind of it's it's self paced, but uh, it works really well. You know, at least technology's come far enough where we can do, you know, school at home and be somewhat productive. (laughs) That's right. That's right. So there's probably listeners out there, Kareem, who, you know, maybe they're in school, maybe they're in a plant and they're wanting to go back to school or or continue their education. And they're hearing your story and and they're feeling inspired. They're they're like, oh, man, this, this guy is on a path. So what advice would you give somebody that wants to pursue a career like yours? Well, I mean, in engineering in general, you have to learn the math. I think math is the governing laws and rules of everything that we do in engineering, math and physics, you know. And as as a kid who transitioned from high school to college, I didn't always take it seriously. I was always pretty good in math, but never really, you know, paid the attention that it deserved. And, you know, as I grew up and started to see how important, especially as I got into my career and saw how important the math really is and how, you know, when I'm going through something and I'm able to explain to the customer from a mathematical standpoint, why it is the way it is and that they need to do X, Y, or Z, you know, the numbers don't lie. They're black and white, they're binary. The numbers are the numbers. And that's one of the things I love about engineering is it's a black and white major. You know, you compare it to medicine while medicine is so different and it's not black and white. There's a lot of gray area in medicine. You know, one, Three, 30 cc's of this medicine is perfectly suitable for you, but it will kill the next person over there because the, you know, the, 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 the physical makeup of the body is, is, is different from person to person. And there, there's just so much to take into consideration when it comes to that. Whereas with engineering, especially with power, power, you know, we're still using the same formulas that Newton, Fortescue, and all these guys who, who came up and developed these, these ways of doing, you know, hundreds of years ago. And so I would say the math is very important to understand the why of what you're doing. I think it makes the engineer a good engineer. You know, and today, there are a lot of programs that do all the hard work for you. And it's easy just to throw something in a model and be done with it and push a button and get an answer. But, you know, when you go to a customer and the customer has a question as to, hey, why is this so high and you don't understand the math behind it, then, you know, you're not going to really have an answer for them. So, 
I would say, you know, take, take the math seriously. When you understand what you're doing mathematically, it makes the problem or understanding the problem much easier to diagnose. As far as advice for people wanting to do what I do, engineering is a lot of fun because, you know, you can see the results at the end when you design something. And, and you know, I have a wide background in design, not just power systems, but design as well. And, you know, you go through and you wire up things, you connect it, you design it, and then you implement it. And then, you know, you can walk away and say, hey, you know what? I did that. It's uh, it's uh, like an intrinsic satisfaction there involved in as well. Uh, engineering is hard. It's not for everybody. And a lot of people don't get through it because they they underestimate the complexity of engineering. But it's very satisfying. It's very well worth the pain, in my opinion. I would say that you can you can do it. Stay focused. Take the math seriously, especially you know, the math related to the engineering courses that, that you take. And don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. If you want to do it, knock it out, put the time and effort, and I, I think ultimately you'll be successful. No doubt. That was great. You also mentioned that you like the in the uh, classroom environment, but are there other ways or other resources that you tapped or that you like to, to utilize to expand your, your knowledge? Absolutely. I'm a huge fan of Google. <laughs> Google, uh, uh, textbooks, my professors, mentors. You know, one thing I've learned over the years is where to go get the information that I need. And I, I've really learned from my, my great mentor at Mesa Associates a long time ago that, you know, you have to be, be efficient in what you're doing. And you can't spend a lot of time just, just spinning your wheels and being bogged down. If you're stuck for too long, get up and go ask somebody, you know, do some search. There's, I guarantee you, there's uh, somebody else has dealt with the situation and they've got an answer. They they can at least point you in the right direction. No doubt. I mean, I was, I'm kind of glad you went there from that get up and go ask somebody standpoint, because that kind of leads me to my next area that I love to talk to and give a chance for, you know, the heroes to, to give those shout outs to any mentors or influencers that have, that have helped you in your career thus far? Yeah, so my, my first shout out would be to Daryl Cross Jr. He he is the uh, first engineering manager that I worked for right out of college. It gave me an opportunity to come and basically leverage my math skills right out of college. And, you know, I've had the pleasure of working with him for, for eight plus years, especially those critical years of my engineering development. Uh, you know, he's he, he's a great friend of mine. He was also a superb mentor to me. In addition, he enjoyed engaging in the technical work. And then, you know, we've taken many of a conversation to the whiteboard and just worked through the math until we figured it out. You know, he taught me how to dig until I understood what I was doing myself and the math behind what I was doing and not to ever guess about what I was doing. Because, you know, again, engineering is black and white. It's binary. And so there is a right answer to it. And so, you know, I just uh, I just appreciate and I've told him this over the years. I appreciate Daryl for taking me under his wing and, you know, helping me learn the things, the skill sets that I've learned over the years. Very good. Very good. Now, now, everybody has things they get they get pumped up about, man. So what's what what projects get you excited, Kareem? Um, so <laughs> projects in in general, uh, just anything that has to do with power systems it gets me excited. You know, I I do a lot of I do a lot of really high theoretical stuff, like some of the NERC, you know, projects PRCs, where we're looking at load a bit line loadability and you know, selective coordination for NERC for the bulk electrical system. So those kind of things I like doing a lot of math involved, you know, I like doing anything with power systems analysis, you know, especially load flow, short circuit, arc flash, all that stuff I do by hand. I I, I kind of pride myself on being able to do that stuff by hand and still, you know, because I understand what's going on with it from a mathematical standpoint. So it's tedious, (laughs) but I'm I'm a math geek and my, my daughter always calls me a math nerd but, uh, you know, I, I think math is math is extremely important. So I get excited about stuff like that. What, I do have a very I, I do get bored very easily, too. And uh, it's just my personality type. I think, you know, I, I don't like doing the same thing over and over again. I really despise repetition. So if I get into studies, if I'm doing the same stuff over and over again, I kind of get 
bored of those. So, so anything that's kind of fresh, new challenge, new challenging um, projects or whatever, I, I get excited about. I kind of wake up for that every day. Man, that is great. I love to hear the passion in your voice. And that's going to lead me to a fun question. I'm waiting to ask somebody like you, Kareem. So there, <laughs> there, there are people who have certain perceptions about engineers. And if you had a chance, and here's your, your platform, you can de- debunk some of these myths out there. What would it be, <laughs> man? Uh, <laughs> well, there's one that I hear a lot. You know, people people think that electrical engineers are, we're, we're these imaginary guys. We deal with things in just imaginary space here. And you guys are chasing chasing electrons and <laughs> all this stuff. And, uh, you know, hey, we don't do, you know, Especially, and, and this is because you know, our friends like to mess with us. When I worked in an environment with multidisciplinary engineers, you had you know mechanical engineers and civil structural engineers, and then we had the electricals over there. Those are the those are the imaginary guys. They mess, we don't understand. See, the truth is that electrical engineers take like the math. We go further into like complex variables and stuff like that, and so we deal with math you know from a complex standpoint i would say you know, r plus jx or whatever or imaginary if you will standpoint where a lot of the other engineering discipline don't don't mess with that and so i had one ask me one time Are you guys just chasing electrons and stuff and so i said okay that's fine you think that so you think everything that you do as a structural engineer is concrete and it, it's tangible you can see and he's like, absolutely. I said, well, okay. So how do you calculate a moment? What is a moment? And I said, can you see a moment? When we talk about moment of inertias or forces and stuff, can you see these forces? No, you can't. Can you see the moment? No, you can't. But you calculate it, right? The same way we don't see the electrons with your naked eye. You can, you've got electron microscopes. You can look at them and stuff too. But the same way that we, can, we use math to calculate the interactions of electrons you know, through system, which we call the flow of current, you calculate moments of inertia and forces on on beams and on everything else the same way. Even though you can't see it, you use math to calculate it. And he's like, you know, I never thought about that. I guess you're right. <laughs> so, so, That's so awesome. It's, it's really just the same. At the end of the day, you know, you think about engineering. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, um, I, I just hard plumbed my my pool at home the other day it's an above ground pool and i I called a friend of mine who was a uh who was a mechanical engineer just to run some things by him and you know if if i didn't do electrical engineering the other uh engineering that i would love to have done would have been mechanical engineering i think mechanical is so much fun and there's a lot of parallels between electrical and mechanical engineering and uh, like like flow is analogous to current and pressure analogous to voltage and resistance is resistance. But at the end of the day, it's all the math that governs engineering in general. So. So, yeah, as far as, you know, debunking that, I, I think at the end of the day, we all calculate mathematically a lot of things that we can't necessarily see. But, uh, you know, we we rely on the math to make some sense of what we're doing. No doubt, man. I mean, you you just hung on the rim on that one. So some mechanical engineer somewhere is like, wait a minute. So uh, exactly, they, they can call back and they'll be the uh, the next hero, you know. But uh, for, for here, you just slammed it, man. That was awesome. Uh, what, what do you wish you had more time to do at work, man? I, I think you know, working on more. I don't know. I I, I get a pretty good amount of uh, of of power system specialty projects that I get, you know, like protection, relaying and stuff like that. So it's not, um, it's not math. Uh, well, I mean, it's all, <laughs> it's all math, but <laughs> at the end of the day, it's all math. So, um, you know, I would say probably teach one of the things that I love doing and, you know, you know, is, is really teaching and helping mentor, uh, the younger engineers that, that I've, uh, that I work with now you know, like, like I had the opportunity to have, you know, like, like I said, with Daryl and some of the other mentors that I've had over the years, you know, they really did a really good job at instilling me the love or in me, the love for not hoarding the knowledge that I have, but actually passing it on. And, you know, I had one, one mentor tell me, he said, you know, I want you to be better than me so that, you know, I can just give it to you and walk away. (laughs) and I don't have to worry about coming back. 
you know, and because uh, I have enough to do on my own. So yeah, I, I kind of keep that mentality. I know engineers would like to keep all the information. They're the only ones that do it. And then when they retire, you have a huge deficit. Uh, and so Eaton does a good job at trying to, you know, reward mentorship and teaching. And it's something that I wish I had more time to do. You know, I, I was actually doing that. I uh, bounced between three different offices prior to the COVID-19, the Birmingham office, the Atlanta office and the national office. And of course, with the travel restrictions, you know, we haven't been able to do any of those things. So I'm hoping that will open back up here shortly so I can return to, you know, mentoring the, uh, the younger engineers in our offices. Man, that is great. I mean, I, I did not know about that uh, initiative, but it, we, we've heard on several of our, of our episodes where, you know, there's retiring workforce and the next generation and building the next generation up. So, you taking a proactive stance on that and, 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 and really hitting it, man, that's going to make an impact. That Hats off to you for doing that, well, man. Well, thank you. Thank you. I still got another 20 something years to work, but you know, one of the, one of the issues that we had was my, my generation of engineers, you know, we were, we had to step up and fill some huge shoes because the, the, uh, the generation of engineers after me, seems like they went into more computer engineering or, you know, computer science and so forth. And so, you know, generally every 10 years, you've got, you know, a group that looks toward the previous group as, you know, for mentorship. You know, my, my mentors were up in the 20 plus years older than me. I had to go. I mean, the thing is, I had to learn quickly. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, it's a good and bad thing because, I mean, you've got some huge shoes to fill. Working with, you know, you're a one year engineer, two year engineer, and you're being mentored by a 30 year engineer who's been doing this for 30 years. And they have a lot of knowledge to offload on you before they retire in, in you know, two years. And so you have to get up to speed quick. You have to learn a lot. And, you know, it's funny because a friend of mine, he's in the same situation. He moved to California, but he's kind of like in that same boat where he had to learn a lot and learn quickly before his mentors retired and uh you know the majority of mine have retired and they're enjoying retirement and having fun and i still engage with them from time to time if i get stuck on something and they're more than more than happy to answer my questions even now so you know it's a it's a learning process but i mean you're right you know as as more and more engineers retire they will need replacements and so you know it's it's very important to to mentor those who actually are willing to go and learn no doubt, man. No doubt. So let's take let's let's take a turn and and go away from the professional career and talk a little bit about you know you outside of work. So you have any hobbies or anything you like to enjoy in your off time? Yeah, I uh, I like flying drones. Actually, like I told you, mechanical engineering fascinates fascinates me. Quadcopters, DJI. I have a DJI Mavic Mini. I had a Phantom before. Um, looking at probably trying to build a drone here shortly. That's that's one thing that I like doing a lot. I'm also an avid swimmer. I love swimming. And so those are some of the things that I do to, uh, you know, keep my mind from thinking about the math all the time, <laughs> because that can uh, trust me. I've woken up in the middle of the night and ah, I finally get it. I understand it now. And I get up. My wife's like, where are you going? I'm like, I need to go write something down. <laughs> so. Right. so yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. She's like, you're nuts. <laughs> so there's sometimes, you know, like I, I, I put a small, it was nothing big. I, I did like a 12 by 24 by 50 something above ground pool in my backyard. And my backyard is very sloped. So I had to do all of the leveling by hand. And I, I did with a shovel. I did some of it with one of those tillers that helped a lot. But uh, I'll tell you what. Being out there digging, not having to think about anything, just letting my brain just just relax was some of the most relaxing moments of my life I've ever had. <laughs> you know, if I could if I could make what I make by digging ditches, sometimes I think I would take it over. <laughs> right, right. So, so yeah, I, I try when I'm doing stuff like throwing a football, playing. You know, we just bought a basketball goal for my my daughter loves basketball, so we just bought one and we've just been out there just just throwing hoops and doing things. So anything that takes my mind away from engineering, sometimes, even though I love engineering, 
I, I do get over overloaded sometimes. I need to take a break. So those are the things that I like doing in the interim when I'm not, you know, totally engulfed in math. I hear you, man. I, you've mentioned your daughter. So we, we love to, to talk about our families and give our, our heroes a chance to talk about their families. Anything you'd like to share there? Yeah, I mean, I, I've got a little family. I've got a wife and a 13-year-old daughter. And I've got a 10-year-old son who has Down syndrome. Uh, and uh, he is... Uh, he is a he's a high functioning little boy, but he he has he has quite a bit of challenges associated with him, and so it's been it's been a learning experience for my entire family. You know, we we have nobody else in our family with Down syndrome or any type of you know mental delay or disability or anything. So it's it's been more of a you know learn as you go. I mean, you know, my my daughter there is a progression path for her. We kind of have some idea of you know how she's going to go. She's already talking about being a anesthesiologist. So she has her track already and she's a 4-0 student in, in, in school. And then, you know, my son on the other side is totally opposite. So, you know, it's something that's taught me patience. He's a loving boy. He loves me. He likes to ask me the same thing five times in a row, which I've learned <laughs> to just have patience. And uh, it's uh, that's the biggest thing. It's taught me patience, patience that uh, I think that others have had with me. And so, you know, now I get to return that to them. And, you know, I know as an engineer, just learning and even probably still, I ask a lot of questions sometimes. And sometimes maybe they're not the smartest questions, but you know, people have patience with me. And so, you know, we have to have patience with, with others as well. He's here for a reason, something we're supposed to learn. And uh, we're just trying to figure out what that is and just take care of him. He gets treated no differently than anybody else in my household. And so we've, uh, we've just kind of decided to do it like that, not to, you know, surround ourselves with people with disabilities or people who feel sorry for themselves, but just to, uh, you know, surround ourselves with, you know, with, with normal people who, you know, just living life. And so, you know, he, he has the same opportunities everybody else does. So that's, that's just a little bit about my family. We like to do stuff at how, or at the house. We, we do a lot of traveling. My wife's a Disney nut. So we're there at least twice a year. With the exception of this year, which is great because they closed it down. I'm not a big Disney fan, but she is. Okay. And uh, she's going crazy now because she hasn't had her – it's almost like her caffeine in a way. So, uh, you know, it's just so expensive when you go in there. But, I mean, I must admit I like it too. I mean, but not as much as she does. So, anyway, we like traveling, doing a lot of things. And, uh, yeah, I just – I have – I mean, I, I, I like my little family for the most part. <laughs> 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 hats off to you, man. I mean, that, that's that's <laughs> great, you. man. I mean, it sounds like you got a a great family, a wonderful thing, a lot going on at the house, and that's just wonderful. So you mentioned you guys like to travel some too. So where are some cool places you've been? Well, like I said, the majority of times we've got well, we've done Niagara, we've done uh, we've got family in Ohio, family in Maryland. I've traveled a lot, you know, for work and stuff. I spent a lot of time out West Coast supporting. PG and E when I was with Mesa Associates, Kansas City. We've just been kind of mostly north and southeast. Uh, we do a lot of beach trips. You know, Panama City is our yearly go-to, so we'll we'll go down there at least once a year and and just just spend a couple of days at the beach and this this one resort that we we frequent a lot. They they kind of know us by name <laughs> now that we we go down there quite a bit. So. Uh, you know, every once in a while, my, my wife's uncle will, you know, rent a big place for the entire family. We'll just go and hang out for a week or so. So, you know, we try to do things together to kind of break up the monotony of the work and, the you know, the school and all that to have a somewhat of a balanced life. No doubt, man. That is great. I mean, it sounds like you, you've had some some great things. Anything on the bucket list from a travel standpoint you want to do? Well, there's a lot. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm, i I have not been to Colorado, but I've seen a lot of video and a lot of reviews. I want to visit the Rocky mountain national forest parks. We're, we're also big, big skiers and snowboarders. I, I ski and my daughter just started snowboarding. So, you know, we want to take some trips out there. It's specifically the Colorado, uh, this year. And, you know, of course, this is all dependent on, you know, travel restrictions, and all that now to see if we can we can swing this. But, yes, yeah, so that's one place I want to see the Grand Canyon. I haven't seen that yet. 
you know, Yosemite, Yellowstone, those are the kind of, I'm, I'm a huge outdoor guy. I love the, you know, the natural setting hands down over a Disney park any day, in my opinion. But, uh, but yeah, that's, but I have to have to keep the wife happy, I guess. <laughs> also. Well, so, and that's, that's her happy place. There's a saying about that, you know, about that happy wife deal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. I don't know if I subscribe <laughs> fully to that, but I, I, I hear you, man. <laughs> I hear you. Well, well, what about the, uh, man, if you were had the, the perfect day for Kareem, man, what, what are you doing for that day? If, if you were had to describe it? Oh man. I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to tell you that. That's, uh, oh man, I'd probably be. I don't know what some of the most perfect days, at least on this earth here would be probably waking up at Panama city or maybe, you, you know what? I take that back. Probably in Maui. My wife and I went to Maui for our honeymoon and you know, those 10 days that we were there were just amazing. The, uh, the, 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 the weather, the activities that we did, the, the scenery, it just, I, it'd probably be waking up in a chalet somewhere probably on one of Maui's beaches, just, just doing nothing and just relaxing and having a great time, man. And then I would get bored and want to go solve something probably. <laughs> so I'd go <laughs> grab a book or so I'd mess it up. And my wife would be like, what are you doing? You're messing up our, t- our time here. And so I would get bored eventually. I probably could take a couple of days of just, just doing that. And, uh, you know, just, uh, just just living life a little bit man that's super chill so you 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 sparked something with me man my wife and i we went to maui when we got married so so, uh, we spent a week out there so man uh, i'm sure you hit up all the fun stuff that uh, maui has to offer and oh yeah we went to the volcano and yeah you know did watch you go to hannah yeah you do you did the road to hannah that long we did we did a convertible and uh, that was a mistake. It's, the sun, the sun is way too intense, and so my wife was all burnt up by the time we got there. But I mean, we were able to swim in the seven, the seven pools out there. You know, it was, it was just an amazing experience. And so my daughter now, when she turns fifteen, we have promised to take her to Maui. So that's a trip that we're planning right now. Oh man, that's gonna be to awesome. Go back and that's that. that's yeah. gonna be so much fun. The big, probably one of the best things for me is I'm a motorcycle guy. Nice. So I rented a Harley out there nice. and, and rode it from one end of the island, basically all the way around. We just took a whole day and just did, and in Hawaii, there's no helmet law and exactly you can just sit back on these back roads and just kind of chill out. And it, it was just, you know, we, we went <laughs> snorkeling, you know, he did, you know, yeah. luau's, all that fun stuff, yep. man. So, uh, you know, how about parasailing? Did you no, parasailing? did not, oh, did man, not do that. So I, I like staying on the ground, Kareem. <laughs> so. You know, I'll go in the water and I'll go underwater, but I don't like to get up in the air, man. It, it took really? a, it took a lot to get me on that airplane to to go out there. But uh, man, that's yeah. a flight. I mean, there's like, I mean, and you know, you've been there, so like from the time you leave California all the way to Hawaii, there's nothing but just Pacific Ocean, open ocean, well, and I, it's like for somebody who doesn't like flying, that's that's a uh, that's a little rough. So this is <laughs> this is my first major flights that I did. And this is back when we got married, so. We didn't fly from California going out, no, nope. sir. We flew from oh. Texas. Oh. It was eight hours. Wow. At hour six, I was about to lose my mind. Oh, man. That's rough. <laughs> See, we, we flew from Atlanta to uh, LAX, from LAX to uh, OGB. I forgot what it is, but it's like uh, wherever it is. I forgot. It's been a while now, but into Maui. Uh, and uh, that, that took about five hours. That that second leg, yeah, yeah. So but eight hours, yeah, man, that's that's rough. <laughs> yeah, it was a rough one, but uh, when, when we landed, I kissed your grand and we had a great time. So you know, <laughs> good deal, good deal, man. This has been great, and we love to to wrap up the the hero episodes of Eco Ask Why to getting down to your individual purpose and your drive. You know why you get up and do what you do, man. I, and I love to hear that. So obviously. I would say my my driving factor is first most to provide for my family. That that's the first thing that I do, and I think a lot of guys I've talked to about this, the, the fear the fear of not being able to provide for your family. I think that that to me, I'm I'm kind of old school in mindset. I believe that the the father is the provider of the family, and that's that's just my personal belief on that. And so for me, it's important for me to make sure that I provide a living for my, you know, for my wife and my, 
my daughter, my son. I'm not saying that my wife can't work, but she can do whatever she wants. And that's fine. And I appreciate it. I welcome any additional funds that don't come in through my, my paycheck. That's great. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, I would say, you know, providing for my family is, is, is probably my motivation. Uh, the second is just that I am just a engineer at heart. I love doing what I do. I get excited about the unknown, learning what I learned, the math behind something, being able to figure out something mathematically and then go and wire it up and then test it and see that it measures exactly what I calculated. To me, it's just fantastic. And it's a black and white phenomenon that, that I can always take to the bank. I enjoy it. I enjoy helping Others learn engineering. I think engineering is a very, very lucrative career. It pays well. I think it matters. I, I think, you know, when you think about, the, you know, the medical industry, the, the doctors, they all use products that are made by engineers. You know, the utility power industry, it's all relevant to everything that we do. So I, I think I'm in a sector that is extremely relevant. You know, even during this COVID pandemic, you know, we are essential organization, uh, you know, because we support healthcare, we support utilities, all that stuff. And so a lot of this mandate to stay home for for non-essential employees and all did not apply to us. So, you know, I, I think, you know, it's it, it's a very pertinent, uh, I guess, you know, career path for me to be in. And so for all those reasons, I enjoy doing what I do to get up to help my family first and foremost, uh, to help others, help my clients, my customers, and, you know, enjoy the education aspect. Because I think, to, I mean, you know, to me, if you can educate somebody on their system and what they do, I think they're more, they're more able to um, make decisions for themselves. So, I mean, you've heard that, you've heard the saying, you can, you, you can bring a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, and, or you can teach him how to fish and he'll, he'll eat for a lifetime. So one of the things that I try to do is through education, educate my customers so that they can they can operate their system uh, on their own. You know, I guess within within reason, I'm not expecting them to go through and do all the math that I do. But one thing I like to do is to help educate them on their systems uh, and what they're doing and help them make decisions about better ways to improve the process in which th that, you know, they're currently going through. And so that that's really helped my relationships with my clients. It also helps, you know, them to build a certain amount of trust in me as well, because, you know, I can go and crunch the numbers and we can talk about the numbers or we can talk about things from, you know, a standpoint that does not have to do with the numbers. I can be a little more general about stuff. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the ability to know the customer and know how to effectively deliver the information that they need. So, I mean, all, all those things motivate me. I would say money is also a motivating factor. I think all of us work for a paycheck. You know, we work for a living. And like I say, engineering pays very well. And so, you know, it's one of those things to where I think for what I do and the impact that I have and the, the vertical that I'm in, all of those, you know, rolled up in a nutshell, uh, make me motivated and, and get me excited about getting up every day. Absolutely, man, and and no day's the same, and and man, you exactly. you're all over it. And Kareem, thank you so much. I know you've inspired some listeners out there, and love your story. You know the things that, that you've accomplished in your career. There's a lot more to come. Um, excited excited to see the next steps for you, and I just really appreciate you 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 being so open and candid with with us here, and and, and the time that you took with us today. So thank you so much. You are very welcome, Chris. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S. -S 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 -S